So these are the two base controllers that I've picked. Uh, this is the uh, uh, humidity controller. So I'll have the dehumidifier plugged into uh, where it says uh, work one here. And then, yeah, you just set the uh, the parameters at what percentage of humidity you want it to turn on. And once it reaches that, it'll shut it off. So pretty straightforward. And this little probe just goes inside the kiln. Uh, this is uh, what they call a PID control uh, temperature controller. Um, it's basically just a thermostat, as far as I can tell. A little bit of research I did. The only difference is, is you have infinite settings on here where a thermostat regulates from 15 degrees uh, up to say 35 and there's not much registering after that. I plan on <clears throat> having the kiln at uh, 110, 120 uh, at first to experiment, see how that works. So I can set this, uh, you know, all the way up to, um, uh, you know, the temperature of the sun if I want. But, uh, so that's why I went this route instead of just using a off the shelf thermostat. So, um, the heat lights, heat lamps will be plugged into here and I'm not going to be using anything on the pump. So, this is just more or less an auxiliary. You can have this set to turn on and off as well. Uh, but that's it. And uh, so I'm going to get these uh, mounted to some kind of a board and then uh, start getting the thing wired up. Okay, we got everything fired up. Here's the uh, heat control, humidity control. I'm gonna tidy up these wires yet, but they all go in their certain little spots there. And come around the front. Check it out. So, put the heat source on one side. There's my little stack of lumber, my dehumidifier. So we're gonna close it up and see if this thing will dry wood. All right, we've been on for uh, two hours. Exactly two hours and eight minutes. The temperatures come up to 61 and the humidity is sitting at 34 right now. So I'm gonna uh, adjust the humidity a little bit want it to sweat a little bit right now but that temperature's got to come up and in the two hours we have drawn out oh about a about two paints or so quartz so anyways Pulling water out, so that's a good th a good thing. All right, so I shut this thing off last night before bed. I mainly wanted to see 
when I shut it off, I had uh, uh, internal temperature was uh, 70.1 degrees. So I want to see where we're at now. So looks like overnight we've dropped 10 degrees or so. fire this back up. The humidity has risen off the charts so this thing's got to get to work. And just to give you an idea it's minus six here today so that's pretty good. This thing's held heat in well. Okay so we're about to really geek out here over some uh, humidity and heating controls here so I've adjusted the temperature the set value of the temperature down to 85 degrees and mainly because I found that the temperature on the humidity controller is showing that it's about 115 or so and you can see the humidity is climbing now because I've dropped the temperature so um, warmer air tends to hold more moisture so the relative humidity will go down as the air warms up. So by cooling the air the air becomes denser which makes the relative humidity go up. So it's rapidly climbing right now and we'll see this turn on the dehumidifier will turn on once it reaches 65. So what's happening here is the rate of this flashing, I don't know if you see that here, has been continuously changing as this temperature is dropping. So it's a really really accurate way to control the temperature. However, we don't really need it super accurate in this kiln. All we need it to do is we just need the wood to sweat and we need the dehumidifier to take away the moisture. The reason I like what this is doing though is it'll it gives time for the air temperature to change in there rather than it just sort of rapidly moving up and down. So the idea is get the moisture out. So I think this temperature changing up and down is going to help do that. But again, we have to keep in mind we don't want to dry too quickly and we don't want to leave the moisture in there circulating around causing you know dew and mold or anything like that so um trial and error here and i think this whole system is uh working out really really well so far so i'll continue to update on how this stuff works and we'll go from there Alright, so what we just saw there was the, there's no heat source on right now. The temperature sort of hovered in around 85, 86, and the humidity was rapidly rising. So that was over a period of about seven minutes. It rose to where, uh, where it's at now, 71. But it just kicked on the dehumidifier. So I imagine the temperature is going to drop as the humidity comes out of the air. 
and as the temperature drops then this will kick off kick back on and it'll slowly start ramping up and as soon as the temperature comes on this rapidly falls again down into uh, you know 35 percent or so so when this hits I think this has to drop to 80 for the heat to turn on but as soon as it hits 85 this will start flashing and you'll see it will sort of try and keep that temperature right there I'll come back in about an hour and see where it's at okay it's been 30 seconds I'm back I don't know if you can tell here the there's a green light indicating that the humidifiers on and this has been starting to flash like about every 20 30 seconds you see a little flash and what that would be doing because I'm using lights the lights would just flash on and off and then it's just trying to really accurately keep this temperature and again I don't know if that's imperatively important in this application but um, it's just the proof of the concept is that it's it is working if we were to ramp up the temperature this number would go down in a hurry so we can do that by uh, increasing the set temperature we'll just go like whatever 90 f there we go set that now that green light should come on here there it is and right here we'll watch the uh, humidity start to drop quite rapidly All right, I think we can see how effective the two uh, controllers are working together. So, so far I'm going to say it's a big win. We'll all see how the wood is in a month or so. And I'll, uh, well I should note too, uh, the cherry that I put in there, it was uh, a dead standing tree. It had been dead for about four years. And it was 28% when it went in. And the walnut that's in there is off the charts on my meter anyway. So it'll be over 40, 40%. So I'll check it in about a week and see what we get from there. <laughs> 